information for us to know in terms of moving forward. AU Health is already offering those tests to its patients. Pursuing a medical degree is a serious commitment, one that takes dedication. And now, after four years, the Medical College of Georgia says goodbye to some familiar faces. Here's News Channel 6's Ashley Flette. Even though events like graduation are now an online thing, some students say that doesn't stop them from celebrating. For them, graduation signifies another stepping stone towards their future. Certainly congratulate Miller and her classmates. Uh, they're all a wonderful group of students. Uh, I would normally, if we were doing this in person, shake her hand and call her Dr. Singleton. After years of hard work, late nights, and early mornings, 2020 class president of the Medical College of Georgia, Miller Singleton says not having an in-person graduation ceremony is a letdown. Disappointing because for us, graduation is not only a time uh, of celebration, but it's also a time to say goodbye to classmates before we head all across the country for residency. Just months before graduation, the coronavirus changed what Singleton says is most important in any medical field, and that's the hands-on learning. Always told that you can learn more from one patient than you can from any textbook. An impact that's felt not only by the students, but the professors who teach them and the patients they care for. Those of us that have been taking care of patients have missed having students in the uh, learning environment because they're a big part of our practice and we really do enjoy having them with us. Singleton says getting through medical school is not an easy task, keeping in mind that it's more about the patient than the diagnosis. As you're caring for the patient as a whole, you're getting to know that person, you're getting to know their family, you're getting to know just so much more about them um, than their disease. Um, and I think that MCG has really prepared us well. And for the professors, this means change. A set of new faces to teach and minds to mold. This is not the first generation of physicians that have graduated into uh, a pandemic. These students are ready to do their jobs. Dr. Miller Singleton will continue her education at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. She plans to complete her residency in gynecology. In Augusta, Ashley Flette, WJBF News Channel 6. Hundreds have tried to ride their performance citizen's arrest. That's what we're asking as the investigation continues into Amon Arbery's death. First up tonight, South Carolina restaurants getting the option to open some dine-in services again. So we went to check and see what restaurants are doing to reopen, and are they? And remember, there are several things those restaurants have to do if they want to reopen for business in, in dining. And here are those requirements, including allowing half their maximum capacity, spacing out tables at least six feet apart. Sydney Highburger is live for us near the alley in downtown Aiken. And Sydney, do things finally look normal there tonight or not? Well, Richard, even though restaurants are still technically allowed to reopen for limited indoor dining, the dinner rush in downtown Aiken today still seems like it's mostly limited to outdoor seating and to-go orders. A lot of these restaurants telling me that they just don't feel like it's time yet to reopen for safe indoor service, but a few other restaurants I talked to said they just couldn't wait another minute. Since 1957, City Billiards in Aiken says it's their cheer-style environment that's kept the doors open. Financially, it's a big struggle trying to keep a restaurant going, keep food in process, and uh, keep it all safe and secure by DHEC rules. So Michael Allen says shutting the doors wasn't going to cut it any longer. Well, it feels good. You know, honestly, you can see people coming inside the restaurant versus just coming and going. Uh, a lot of them are our friends. Right down the street, the folks at What's Cooking Downtown are a bit more skeptical. think that there's going to be some repercussions, but hopefully not. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst. They're taking an extra day to play it safe, making the restaurant safe for the customer's return. So we're having a full staff meeting, sanitizing, uh, sealing the floor. At Mellow Mushroom Aiken, they're taking even longer. Even at 50% capacity, they say that would still allow 80 people inside at a time. The number one priority here is community and staff safety. So if we can't do it to where we can sanitize completely in between each table, I don't think it's responsible for us to do it. Ultimately, it's up to each restaurant if they want to reopen. And even with the doors open, it's not business as usual. We're sanitized and ready for you. But at least it looks a bit more familiar. 
Governor McMaster did release a list of safety recommendations for restaurants to follow, but that list is just that, recommendations. The governor says he expects businesses and restaurants will use common sense when reopening indoors and that people will report any restaurants exhibiting unsafe business practices to their local law enforcement. Richard? I know a lot of people are ready to get back out there just as long as it's safe. Sydney, thanks so much. Governor McMaster also setting some guidelines for close contact businesses to reopen across South Carolina a week from today. That's places like hair salons, nail salons, gyms, and athletic facilities. And here are some of those guidelines that they were, will have to follow when they do reopen. Places like hair and nail salons will have to be by appointment only, no walk-ins. Every other seat needs to be unused and open. Places like gyms and fitness centers have to clean the equipment more frequently and make sure people are social distancing. A lot of workers at these businesses will also need to wear masks. And the governor, the governor was asked who would hold these places accountable. The business owners, the employees, and the customers that go into these places, I think there are certain expectations of what people are, are, are seeking when they uh, frequent one of these establishments. And if they're not there, then the, the marketplace will work. But we, we, in order to be competitive, you have to you have to be following these guidelines, or you lose all your customers. And tomorrow, the Chamber of Commerce is announcing a relief and recovery plan for those South Carolina small businesses. Also this evening, a new DA is named to lead the prosecution. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. Before COVID-19 shut down the sports world, rec league basketball in Thompson was going as strong as ever. A big part of that, former Bulldog Montego Cummings, who's still active in that community. It was 1995, Thompson against Westside at Christenberry Fieldhouse, featuring three former NBA players, one of them, Montego Cummings. I still remember that game, you know, playing against some of my good friends. You know, Ricky Moore was a close friend of mine, still is to this day, William Avery. That game, just the start for Cummings, who spent time in the NBA as well as playing pro ball in Europe, but never forgetting his hometown. Basketball took me a long way, and I was able to get out of Thompson with that. And so, you know, with that, I try to give back as much as I can. When they do resume the adult rec league, expect Cummings to be back on the court. He's also big in helping area youngsters and has some poignant advice to them when it comes to balling. You know, I try to tell little kids that, um, nowadays, the ones that I train, use basketball to get where you want to go in life. Don't let basketball use you. Cummings is one of a half dozen pro athletes who come through Thompson over the decades. We continue our spring sports shout-outs today with Rich Springman at a softball, just two seniors. Harlem Tennis, five seniors between the boys and girls teams. Lakeside Boys and Girls Lacrosse Team, they've come a long way since they started the sport. Augusta Prep Boys Soccer, one of the top teams in the GISA ranks. And Ward Law Softball Squad with four seniors on that team. More sports at 11. See you later on.